Good evening and welcome to Clarendon Fine Art live official Instagram. As the UK galleries reopen across the country, we thought we'd invite one of the UK's leading contemporary photographers into our flagship gallery here in Mayfair. He, actually, the last time we saw him, he was just returning from one of his trips and we're now going to see the series live on our walls. Follow me. And he should be in here somewhere. Um, I know he is. It is the man himself. Come and meet Harry Skates. How are you doing? Really nice to see you. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very good to be back. I know. It feels like forever. I mean, it wasn't that long ago no. that we were on a live feed. You were in Genesis, right? Absolutely. Printing. And yeah. now we're here, right? Come and, come, and, come and show us. I'm going to bring the camera with us. Fantastic. Good to finally see them back. Back exactly where they belong. You know, it's, it's one thing seeing them in the printer, but in the frames, in the gallery, yeah, it's the real home stations. They look incredible. I mean, the Thank impact, you. the impact is enormous. Because, like you said, when you had them behind you in Genesis, it was they were beautiful. Absolutely. But it was, it's incredible. You must be really thrilled, right? It's just, it's lovely to see it come to fruition. You know, it's been, it's been a while, and it was the lockdown, the pandemic, and everything's been so difficult to finally see some new work in the gallery. It's really exciting, and, and you know, to see them this is almost almost a sort of life size of a horse. It's it's just yeah, it's a really really beautiful thing to see. This is great. So we're here. We've got six from your new series. Yep. The catalogue was sent out this morning, um, and I've got. Um, I can see a camera over there. I want to have a quick chat about Nikon. We need to clarify this because I've been saying Nick Nikon. I, is, I think is it Nikon. Nikon, Nikon, Nikon. Nikon. It's, it's tomato tomato. It's tomato tomato. But they sponsor you, don't they? they so do, they yeah. are responsible, um, obviously, for the man behind the lens. So this is quite an important part of your... Absolutely. The whole process, right? Yeah, it's, it's the Z range I use these days. So um, Nikon Z7, Z7 II. Uh, beautiful cameras, incredible optics. It's, it's the real breath of fresh air. And like you rightly say, I mean, a lot of it is about the art behind it, but you need the right brush as well. You do. Actually, that's very, very important. Now, Harry, what I thought we'd do, okay, we've had, since we sent out the catalogue this morning, yep. we've had an enormous amount of engagement from the clients. Oh, great. Loads and loads and loads. So I had a whole spiel prepared. And then I realised, actually, as the questions were coming through, um, they were really, really interesting. Some of them obviously talking about the series, a little bit about behind the scenes for you. So I thought it would be really cool to ask yeah, you some absolutely. of these questions, if that's okay. Definitely. And they do very much relate to this new series and body of work, um, which, would be, which would be great with the Kamar courses. So I think, speaking of your, obviously, the camera and your travels, um, so one of the questions that came in was when you do travel, other than your Nikon camera, um, what would you say is your most essential piece of kit and why? That's a great question. That's a great question. Thank you, whoever asked that. Um, a bit of a sidebar. So, it's the thing I think I come back to time and time again is, um, is communication. You know, often I'm in places where you just cannot get hold of people, so something goes wrong, it's a real problem. So, um, I really rely very heavily on a satellite phone, and I don't really feel safe without it. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that I find something goes wrong, but um, it's funny, it's, it's caused me problems in the past as well. Um, I actually had a trip where I was in the Himalayas looking for snow leopards, and using my satellite phone, you know, uh, messaging my, my um, then girlfriend, now fiance, um, about the cat, and all this kind of thing. And actually, the military turned up on the doorstep, um, and it turns out a lot of the sort of rebels in that area communicate yeah. by satellite phone. So um, it suddenly got me out of some holes, it's also put me in soft holes. And actually, um, as I recall, I was uh, in the middle of the night, so I was just in my boxes and my t-shirt. So, <laughs> brilliant. Now, we obviously spoke, when, when you were in Genesis and you're printing and you just got back from your trip, yeah. um, one of the next questions that we had, you know, is why command courses? How did you yeah. hear about them and why, why them? That's a great question. And, and it really comes down to um, everything I'd seen of Kamar courses before, these yeah. incredible, powerful, beautiful, elegant animals, mostly running through water, and they, they instantly captured my attention. But as soon as I sort of started researching them and getting to know a little bit more about them, I realised that it just wasn't their natural state at all. And actually, they live in the marshes, not on beaches, and um, they really don't run like that. They're very docile, they're very calm and relaxed. And the more I began to learn about this, and, and and more I kind of realised it's an opportunity to really show them in their, their true state. And it's so yeah. important to me in all of my work that what we're seeing is them in their natural habitat, in their natural state, as they were meant to be seen. 
Absolutely. one pretty. And so I just, I wanted to go there and I had a bit of a sort of agenda that I wanted to show them these calm, beautiful animals. And, and I think, you know, this, this program in particular shows just how calm they can be. And, and you can see the, the almost perfect reflection that's allowed me to, to kneel in the water for a good 10, 15 minutes without them really moving very much at all. And that's what gets rid of all the little ripples and stuff. So hugely calm, very relaxed animals. And I think all the more beautiful for showing them that way. Absolutely. I mean, to me, this series, um, you know, has got a very sort of portrait-like quality. Um, yeah, for me. Like and I think, um, which really does capture their kind of individual personalities. Yes. Right? Yeah, because, very yeah, because it really is. It's, it's like almost, you know, humane. You know, it really is capturing their, their portraits. Um, so, I mean, these, this one in particular, I mean, both of these, it's, yeah, like they're posing for their, I mean, they, it really is beautiful. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, I, sometimes I think the, deficit, the distinction between human portraiture and, and wildlife portraiture is sort of erroneous in that mm -hmm. we're all animals. Um, and, you know, having, having grown up in a very animal minded family, you know, I was really sort of imbued with the sense that, that animals are sentient and they have personalities and characteristics, and, and that's a real driving force behind their work. So that's exactly the intention. When I say I want to capture animals in their wild, natural state, it's capturing who they are. And that's portraiture. It's the same whether that's a human or whether that's an animal. It's capturing that kind of little spark which makes them men. Yeah, which is uh, no, which is um, really, I think, really key, especially in this particular series. Would you say that you have a? I know we're not really supposed to ask this question. I get that, but would you do you have a, a, a favourite in this series of six that we've had? Yeah, I think today? I think I do. I think I'm between between two, but I think I always come back and back to um, the one we just looked at over here. It's calm water. And I think really for the same reason that we kind of touched upon already, which is it just shows them exactly how they are. And there's no sort of fabrication at all. It's, these are these incredibly calm creatures, just being themselves. And I just love the way that they, that sort of, um, the composition to it. You have this dominant female, and what you'll find is that generally the, the sort of more submissive females will just kind of peel off, off her sides a little bit. And it gives you that natural pyramidal shape. This really strong composition and the high key Kind of white allows it kind of disappear a little bit sort of ethereal feeling um just a really gentle calm uh picture and that's just exactly like their personality so it, it kind of resonates with me having been out there yeah i mean that's a it is a really spectacular composition this particular piece and i think important you know you have the head turned so that drink that brings you back in, into the other side and so you have this lovely pyramid connection with the, all the eyes they all just work together as a sort of cohesive element I think, and that brings us on to another question that we had this morning. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, looking at, you know, for, for all of them, but one of the questions we have, which actually I think is quite key, um, which is what qualities makes a really great photo for you? That's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, for, me, for me, it's all about simplicity. Um, a lot of the natural world is very busy, whether that's, you know, visually or even the noises and, and the sounds. It's just a very busy world, so what you're trying to do with fine art, I think, is, is capture just a single moment. A simple, single moment where you can just tell a lot about one animal. And, and the simplicity of that is what allows you to come back and back to it. You know, it's not distracting, it's just very clean, very minimal, and it allows you just to stay on that image for a much longer time. Um, and, and that's so important, I think, with fine art, because fine art is an investment for life. You know, this is hopefully something someone will hang on their walls forever. Absolutely. And as soon as you see something which is distracting or kind of takes your eye off it, I think that, that really kind of kills it. Yeah, and what would you say is the most difficult part of being a photographer? Ah, that's another very good question. Um, We've got some good questions yeah. from our but We really did. We had a whole, there, were, there were hundreds of them actually, so I've had whittled them down. But that is a good one. Yeah, it is. What so, would you say highlights? I think, I mean, um, the, the challenge about wildlife well, photography is you're not in control of so many things. And, and that's the beauty of it. But you're not in control of the weather, you're not in control of the sightings, you're not in control of what your animal does. You're so reactive um, that you just need to be really in the moment and you need to really have a very clear idea about what you're trying to say about these animals before you go into it. Because you're waiting for that single moment to happen, you know, one two hundredth of a second, yeah. uh, to tell your story. And if that moment goes, it's gone, it's not coming back. Um, so you're just, you're just trying to control as much as you can, and then just allowing yourself to get out there, get wrapped up in it, see the moment, and hopefully capture the moment. And, and that's, that's the challenge, and that's why you can go for months without taking something which is really 
sort of stands up. Absolutely. And is there a reason particularly why wildlife photography that made you pursue that particular field? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm, I've always been a hugely animal-minded person. Uh, and my family, we're very dog-minded, and we have a, have a sort of semi-language for our dogs. Brilliant. Very cool. Um, but, you know, I, I really grew up with these animals, and, and sort of animals, we live in the country as well, and, and I just, just learned so much about these animals that they are individuals, they are personalities and characters in their own right. So, you know, this is something which I think often, often we forget. You know, you think of instincts and sort of quite bestial qualities, but I see them as very much sentient things. Yeah. Um, whose stories should be shared in exactly the same way as, as humans. No, I, and I massively agree with that. Think, looking back to your sort of fine art days, because yeah. I know obviously you've studied fine art, and very much a fine artist in your own right as a photographer, who would you say has been your biggest, or one of your influences, would you say? And where would that, how would you, which, which photograph in the series would you use to kind of better describe yeah. that? That's a, good, that's a good question. I think if we move over to, to Equus. So I think I, I studied um, art history at university and, and I really focused on a lot of the masters, so the British masters, uh, Italian masters, and I draw a lot of inspiration from, from them because the, the principles that they use and employ are you know, so, so prevalent today. They are, they are the core artistic principles across all mediums. So yeah, I keep going back and back to them and learning lessons from them over and over again. You can see in Equus, for instance, the sort of very tenebristic Caravaggio-esque background, which just allows this very crisp subject to just pop right up. Um, it's so clean, so undistracting, it just allows you to take in every single piece of little detail, you know, the cat in the eye, and every single little hair, and this amazing sort of swirling crown they have. It just allows you to kind of linger on the piece a little bit longer. Um, and, yeah, and these are all lessons that you can learn learn from people who died thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. And actually that, that actually leads me on to a very, very key question. And I like this question. This is uh, coming from, uh, from one of our newest clients for you, who's kind of, who's bought a couple of pieces, but also um, would like to know, what is the one thing you wish someone had told you when you far, first start, started taking photographs? That's a good question. That's not a good question. Yeah. Um, so I'm just completely self taught so, um, you know, having, other than saying the, the art sort of academically, I learned probably completely by myself. And what I learned from that is, is it's okay to make mistakes and to fail. And actually it's so important that you do. And I had this really sort of um, erroneous idea that, that uh, great photographers, you know, when you think of the sort of greatest classes of God and all these people, um, they never take bad photos. They're artists, they get right every time. And that's, I think that's really misleading. Um, because actually, if you're taking good photos or, or photos that aren't wrong or bad, um, then you're not really pushing yourself at all. You know, the, the thing about photography is, is it's such a saturated market, and you see so many photos on the internet and all over Instagram, that you really need to be kind of pushing something a little bit different and just thinking about things your own way. Um, and often that will fail, and often that won't work, and, and that's okay, you learn from that. And it's so important to be super critical of yourself. Um, and really kind of assess when you, you come back from a trip or, or when you're looking at a set of images, what worked and what didn't. You know, learn from what did, uh, learn from what didn't and just build from there. And accept that sometimes things don't work. Um, yeah, life lessons. Life lessons. They can be the next path, the next door that we open. Um, now next for you, which is really exciting, um, just tell us a little bit about the National Gallery because this is super cool. Yeah, yeah, so this is very exciting because this is a, um, this is a project with, with Nikon. Um, so we are uh, talking with the creator of the National Gallery. It's really the idea is to compare fine art photography with fine art painting. So um, we'll be talking a little bit about stubs um, in comparison to the horses and, and really how, how fine art photography fits in the kind of canon of art. And I think historically, photography and particularly wildlife photography has often been seen as a slightly different level. And I think these days of all is, is definitely not the case. And this is an art form in its own right, completely, with every kind of element of beauty and, and nuance to it, uh, just in the way of these amazing paintings and sculptures. So it's really exciting to have it on that platform. Um, Definitely. And yeah. I think it's really good. That's going to be really, really exciting. And then obviously, so from the National Gallery, and then I know, and you mentioned your fiancé earlier, but I know that actually you are going to be doing a very special event next, also after the National Gallery, where you're going to be in front of the camera rather than behind the camera. Yes, that's really This is going to be really cool. This yeah. is going to be quite scary in a way. 
you're yeah. not actually buying the camera, you're in front of it. How does that feel for six exciting It's certainly scary at the beginning of the shot, that's for sure. No, uh, yeah. getting married on the 3rd of July. Um, and I'm very excited. Um, you know, there's obviously been a lot of build up, but with the pandemic and a lot of worry and stuff, but things are looking really promising. So, you know, I'm beginning to get quite excited. Um, and yeah, I just, I just can't wait. And, it's and the million dollar question for shoppers, <laughs> actually, who I know will be watching. Um, is he allowed? Are you allowed to take your camera with you on your honeymoon, or or, or is it a no-no? Yeah, it's coming. It's is coming. it coming? Is it coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes everywhere I go, and then we're going out, um, and they're going to be manta rays, uh, hopefully. And I've tried to break up manta rays many times before, um, and I've always been in the right places, done my research, you know, all this kind of stuff, and I've just never got lucky. So, opportunity to photograph manta rays. Uh, I'm not leaving the camera. No, you're not leaving the camera. No. He's not leaving the camera. You're going to take it with you. Well, that would be cool. That might be another series of work on your on yeah, your, on your, on your <laughs> So, and other travels coming up. What else have you got on the horizon? Lots of things. Because because of the pandemic, so much stuff has been pushed back and back and back. So, um, all things being well, uh, I'm pretty much planning on the road from July onwards. Um, so, we've got Alaska, British Columbia, and Canada, Antarctica. Wow. Going back to um, Carl as well, um, Uganda for the gorillas. So. We'll actually have a few months, just, just that's what you need to hope that things open We've got, Yeah, they will. I mean, we're open, our galleries are open. We're looking forward to having events back, obviously, in the gallery, um, which will be super exciting. So this particular series, I know there's 12 in the series. We have six, obviously, that we have um, that gone live to our clients today. So yep. thank you. We really have the most amazing response. Um, but do contact your nearest Clarendon Fine Art Gallery. Um, I know that some of these six will be uh, making their way to the galleries as we speak. I feel very privileged um, that we've got these up. I know we've had multiple appointments coming um, that we're scheduling in for the next uh, week or so, which will be fantastic. But I have to say, Harry, it's been, it's a real honour um, because, like you said, once you see these magnificent Kamar courses in the flesh and actually seen them, how you, you know, how you've printed them and how you've done it, such a large scale too yeah. and yet the detail I mean, the, the Nikon camera is spot on because the detail is incredible yeah I think, I think amazing. the scale is really important you yeah know, it, it just gives you that that impact feel um, and you know it's it's the whole idea of my imagery is to kind of give you the sensation of what I felt when I was there these are all taken camera in hand so you know I could almost feel the um, the air out of this this uh, horse's nostrils on the lens you know it was touching distance and it's it's meant to be conveying that kind of that kind of image. Um, Do you think you'll go back? Yeah, I'm going back with Nikon um, probably in September. Um, wow. Yeah. Amazing. You must build a relationship with all the animals that you, in, in a way, photograph. You know, because you're with them for quite a long time. Certainly, to I. Get that shot, right? Yeah, certainly, I, I feel a, a very strong um, relationship with them, whether or not they. Uh, <laughs> so with me it's very different, but um, I, know. I think they do. I think I think if you treat yeah. them with respect, they generally treat you the same. Um, and and you know, these horses approach me. In fact, um, you can see from their ears that they're, they're very relaxed. These ears are all up. Um, so I think if you treat them that way, then generally generally you're rewarded with the best work because you don't get scared animals, you don't get stressed animals, you just get life as it's meant to be, and that's, that's the, meant to the be. Concept. Well, this is. Utterly amazing. Thank you so much for pleasure. coming in. Thank you. And thank you to everyone that's asked loads of questions today. Because actually that's been that was actually quite cool to actually ask some of the questions you guys wanted to hear the answers to. And the collection is amazing. We are now live with the collection um, in all of your Clarendon galleries and the catalogue has dropped. So Harry, thank you so no, much. Fun. And we'll look forward to seeing you know you back with Absolutely. maybe we can join you on one of the I'm yeah. quite glad seeing one of those trips actually. I think maybe we need to go out on location next time. Uh -huh, that sounds good. Uh, that sounds trip. great. The Clarendon trip, yeah. And we can take everyone with us on the Clarendon trip. Thank you very, no, very much. It's Stay in touch. We will um, and um, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thank take you care. for joining me. Thank you for joining. I don't think I can open my hand.